Thank you, uh, Skyler. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Tilo, for joining in with us. Um, I'm Jim Hunsinger of Lean Frontiers, and uh, we're here. We're going to um, actually talk to Tilo about um, Toyota Kata. So, Tilo, you're familiar. Tilo's the author of this book, uh, Giving Wings to Her Team, along with Jeff Liker. So, that's going to be part of the discussion. And also, too, part of it will be based on uh, Mike Rother and uh, Garrett uh, Allinger's book. Um, Toyota Kata culture. So he'll be talking about that. So one thing um, Skyler did mention about Tilo and Garrett will both be at the summit. Um, the summit, which is April 9th and 10th uh, this year in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Tilo will be doing a, with Garrett a level set the day before um, the summit on April 8th. They'll also be doing a workshop on the subject matter you're going to hear about um, on uh, the day after the summit, April 11th, which you can, um, and Skyla will get that into our chat, but you can register it through the Kata Summit registration, or if you go to the Le Frontiers website under our workshops, it'll be listed there out separately if you just want to go to it as well. Um, and also too, the other thing is these two subject that, uh, subjects that subjects Tilo are going to be going over um, this will be the first time that they'll have uh, have a workshop, and I think the only time in 2024, of this subject matter in the U.S. So if you want to be a part of this from a workshop standpoint and uh, meet Tilo and meet Gerd, come to the workshop, come to the Kata Summit, KataCon 10, 10th birthday of that. And I think that may be it, Tilo. And with that, I'll let you take over. Jim. Thank you so much, Skylar, for having me today. Uh, really great to be here. Uh, cool. I just scanned through the participants here. Uh, so hi, hi, Brian. Uh, I'm seeing you're on. Uh, Fortune, good to see you on. Awesome. A couple of more people here. Um, so let's get started. Um, giving wings to your team. You just uh, presented the book, um, Jim. And um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, coaching today. And actually, a particular set of questions. Um, uh, we made the subtitle of the webinar here, five questions that will change the way uh, you lead um, forever. Uh, yeah, that's high flying, but um, let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Uh, so just, just the other day, I um, ran across a two by two four quad quadrant matrix um, about different options you have as a manager and um, that I, I find that quite re found that quite relatable uh, thinking back of my time as a plant manager and this two by two matrix looked like this here uh, so basically on the x-axis uh, it's like no don't know so as a manager you can be knowledgeable about a topic or you don't know and then on the y-axis, you have uh, two options, how you could uh, work with your team. Uh, you could tell or don't tell. Now, uh, looking at the four quadrants here, uh, there's uh, a couple of uh, obvious things like, um, well, if you're knowledgeable, uh, so bottom left quadrant, um, you could tell. Yeah, uh, maybe that's uh, what we're quite used to. Um, and then there's another quite obvious one, which is, uh, if you don't know, uh, would be smart maybe not to tell rather than not knowing and telling everybody what, what to do. Now, why did, did I bring this up today? Because I was kind of wondering, why are we talking about so much about managers as coaches? Or why are we talking about coaching our teams in general? And I think one of the reasons is that there is a change happening and that is that we're maybe over time naturally and also with all the changes and complexity we're facing in the 21st century where you could say we're moving from the quadrant where we know and therefore could tell more to the quadrant where we there's more and more things we don't know. So as the world is changing, the, the need, the pressure for innovation is increasing for organizations. And these are, these are innovations needed, problems to solve. Uh, we don't have solutions for yet. So basically, we 
don't know. Now, in a way, we could say in a leadership position, we might find ourselves more and more often here. So you're here. And the, the issue here is that, well, if our team knew what to do, that would be great. But our team is here, too. So this is what we might be what we might be finding. Now, um, if that's the case, uh, so what can we do? Uh, because we don't know, our team doesn't know, and if we opt for don't tell, we're not helping. Uh, if we tell, how could we? We can't have all the answers. And I think this is where the power of coaching comes in. But not just any kind of coaching. Um, in order to kind of explore into this unknown zone, we want to coach in a way that develops with our teams a more scientific way of thinking. So basically, we want to coach for developing scientific thinking skills so our teams can explore this unknown zone. And those of you familiar with Toyota Kata might realize that this is very much aligned with what Mike Rother found in his research at Toyota. Uh, that is kind of the foundation for Toyota Kata because the two things to summarize that what he found was first Toyota is purposefully practicing and developing a shared way of thinking and working scientifically and does so on all levels of the organization and the second thing he found was that developing scientific thinking skills with people is not something that is done through remote training in a, in a training room setting, but is done with managers as coaches. So it's done through deliberate practice in the course of normal daily work. And this is actually, for me, the, 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 more the even more interesting part of Mike's finding. Uh, in a way, I sometimes say this is kind of the um the secret sauce here you know the secret sauce so basically managers as coaches kind of developing the organization and the people within the organization now just quickly about scientific thinking why why do we talk about scientific thinking well if we kind of feel like we're we're more and more venturing into the unknown zone our brain has this tendency uh, quite a set of biases, but has this tendency to jump to conclusions based on our past experience. So in a way, we, we want to have a linear explanation forward, just like we have looking backward. I mean, in hindsight, uh, hindsight bias, uh, things seem to be, tend to be explainable, at least we think so. And that kind of creates the tendency that we explain linearly into the future as well. So in a way, you could say we're, we have the tendency to come up with the same solutions, even if it's a new problem. So if, if the solution solves the problem, that's fine. But as time progresses, we'll face more and more problems we don't have solutions for or the solutions from the past don't work. Now, besides these biases, naturally happening to, to all of us. Um, there's also a sec second thing I find particularly important in my experience in teams, and it happened in my team, and that is group dynamics. So whenever we're discussing about our targets, what to do to, to get closer to these targets, to solve problems, just the normal meeting situation, there's always group dynamics going on. And, and research shows that the outcome, the decision that is made in a meeting is quite different uh, depending, for example, on who speaks first, who's raising an eyebrow at what point. Uh, this has nothing to do with the, with the cause of the issue. Like imagine there's a, you're, ha you're in a meeting and the, in the meeting, the team is discussing wh whom to hire. There's two options, A and B. And now the first person to speak uh, is, is in strong favor of person A. Um, and then another person chimes in and is also favoring person A. Now, originally looking at the resume, you were more leaning towards person B. Now, with two of your peers uh, speaking first and favoring A, you might be tempted to reconsider. Uh, and, and, and you're not doing it wrong. I mean, they, they might be right, but you can already see who spoke first is influencing the decision-making process. Um, so 
A, we have biases, B, there's these group dynamics. So um, a countermeasure to that is using a more scientific approach. And, and what is that? What does that mean? Well, at the core is that of scientific thinking, we could say is that any belief we have, any conclusion we come up with should be verified and any idea we have should be tested. Now, let's look a little bit at the second part, um, managers as coaches, why might that be important? And in, in my mind, there's always two pictures when I talk about managers as coaches. And one is this elephant and this, this uh, arrow and bow target here on the right side. And, and what that means is that no matter how much instructions we give to people, how much we tell them to behave or act in a different way, in the end, it, on a day-to-day -day basis, the existing habits will always win. So telling people to act in a different way, uh, just telling them in a training will not do the job. So in a way, we need training on the job to develop new behaviors, new ways of thinking in a more scientific way. The second reason, and I think that's something we don't think about so often, why we need managers as coaches is because management behavior sets priority. Now, targets and targets we deploy, so we could say st a strategy, strategic targets we deploy in a, in a, in a policy deployment, in a Hoshin Kanui process, uh, they usually don't fail because of their definition, they fail in implementation uh, because basically there's this whirlwind of daily business uh, that always wins in priority, if not controlled in a way. So in other words, we could say um, there's two reasons for having managers as coaches, for developing managers as coaches, and that is um, scientific thinking and it is related to the to the target. So why is that? Well, because if you think, imagine if managers on all levels in an organization would coach their teams on a frequent basis. So on every level that would kind of create this, what I call the coaching cadence happening over and over. So by doing so, that would not only stand the chance to develop a more scientific way of thinking into a habitual way of working and collaborating towards achieving our targets, but it would also, because of this cadence and the frequency it's happening with, set priority so that we start working on our strategic targets in a more regular way. Now, how can we help managers to become coaches coaching for that kind of scientific thinking? Now, this is what the coaching kata is about. The coaching kata, a set of questions to get started. Um, and I guess many of you will be familiar with the coaching kata questions. So a, a set of questions, actually it's, not, it's more than five questions, but it's five question phases. What is your target conditions? Where, what is it you want to achieve? Where you now? What did you learn from your last step? So understanding, understanding that, then identifying what's preventing us from getting there. What's our next step, our next experiment? And how quickly can we go and see what we've learned, a reflection point? Now, looking at these questions, usually our first reaction is like, what do you mean? Practice these five questions to become a better coach? really is it that will that make such a difference well let me share some magic with you and actually looking at this coaching kata here and, and kata a japanese word means has two meanings so a it means it's a practice routine to learn something new and secondly the meaning is also a way of doing something so these, this set of questions has two sides. So on the one side, it is a starting point, a starter recipe, a starter kata to emphasize that. So this is something we start with. Now, if we start using these questions with our team in our daily interactions, at first, our brain might kind of say, like, mm, this, this feels strange, this, this is not me. Now, if we push beyond this point, 
we get more familiar with these questions. Um, the questions get, we get comfortable, we, we memorize them, they're kind of internalized now. And at that point, some magic will happen. And our brain will turn these kind of robotic set, these robotic questions into a five phase coaching model. So basically like a scaffold that can help us to navigate to any kind, through any kind of conversation in a more scientific way. Now, again, rationally looking at it, it looks super simple. It's like, okay, sure, we should talk about the target. We should talk about the facts. Then we should talk about obstacles. Then we should agree on a step. And then we should kind of come up with a due date uh, by when we want to reflect on that. Now, I'll show you how if you internalize this model, you could use that and how it would help you in your daily interactions to help your team work in a more scientific way. Imagine uh, you're in one of your daily meetings. So this is maybe a huddle here or a shop floor meeting or a project meeting. Uh, you can see the team standing around the table. Uh, you're, you're the team leader or the department manager here uh, standing in the front here, that's you. Uh, you see some KPIs and charts in the back. Now, uh, your team goes around and reports uh, on, on what they're working on, the targets, on possible deviations, and they just go well, one by one, quick report, uh, just like you do in a, in a daily stand-up. Um, and then at one point, uh, this guy on the left speaks up. And the, the thing is here, he has some deviation um, towards the target. And, and you discuss a little bit with him uh, what the issue is, and then basically in the end, he comes up with the following sentence. He says, no worries, boss. I got this. I will train my team to execute the process correctly. And you think, oh, come on. You told me the same thing last week. Now, don't say it. Don't say it. Um, how could you deal with that uh, in a bit more in a coaching approach and probe a bit more for a scientific way of addressing this? Because, I mean, he might be right. It might be a good next step, but it might be not. And maybe your gut feeling is telling you, ah, I should be cautious here. So here's a trick. Now imagine you have internalized this five-phase coaching kata model. Looks like this. You could also have the card in hand under the table. <laughs> Um, and if you're in a meeting and your gut feeling is, ah, this is my team's getting stuck here, or this is not a step, good step, we cannot do this. First thing you can do is identify what is the discussion about, or to be more precise, in which phase is the discussion in. So basically, just for yourself now, just I'll give you a couple of seconds in the yellow box, read the sentence again, then think about which phase mentally is this person in? What is this person talking about? Target? Actual condition? Obstacle? Step? Or a date? I'm pretty sure that you're realizing that this person mentally is talking about a step. No worries, I will train my team. Now, how do we know this is a good step? Well, we don't know from the step, but a good step, and this is a countermeasure here, should address the obstacle, or to be even more precise, should address the cause of the obstacle. So in other words, if this happens and you're confronted with a premature step or a step you kind of question, don't ask about the step. The worst question probably we can ask here is, do you think this is the right step? What will he say? Of course, boss, you don't trust me. So instead of asking about the step, you go back by one phase and ask about the obstacle. And you can say, hey, interesting. So by training your team, which obstacle are you addressing? What's the problem to be solved here? You could even go further back after that. Say, okay, so and how often does it happen? What's the actual condition now? And how much is this contributing to the deviation from target? We don't, gonna, we don't wanna overdo it here, but again, quick takeaway, 
If you're in a meeting or a one-on-one, -on -one, have your card in hand. And if you have the feeling, ah, this is, well, this is not good, identify where the person's mentally at, what are they talking about, and then go back by one faith. So just to summarize that a little bit here, um, I think we're more and more moving as leaders into the area where we don't know and can't know, and also our teams. Uh, we wanna work on challenges not so many of our competitors have the solution to yet. We wanna be innovative. So for that reason, we'll often be in this quadrant where we don't know and therefore can't tell. So then what can we do? Well, we could coach, we could help our team to work towards the challenge through the unknown zone in a more scientific way. And if we did that on all levels of our organization, we might even be able to create this kind of cadence of coaching that not only develops scientific thinking skills, but also sets priority on working on our targets step-by-step step in a scientific way. And Jim, you mentioned in the beginning um, the book uh, Jeff and I wrote, and you know, this way of working, and it's a novel, and it's about a young manager that is kind of wants to coach her team, and, and she's learning to coach that. And um, the reason why we wrote this book is because we believe, first of all, becoming a coaching leader is a learning journey. And we wanted to paint a picture of how this journey could look and actually give an invitation for anybody responsible for working and leading people in a leadership position uh, to, to start their own learning journey. Because we believe your team can do it. They need you as a coach. So the coaching kata is a set of questions that can help you get started and can also help you to give wings to your team. Jim, with that, I'll hand it back to you. Um, maybe there's some questions in the chat or Jim, you have some questions in mind that listening to this, um, back to you. Yep, yeah, thank you, Tilo. And uh, maybe I'll keep my, my uh, for whatever reason, it keeps knocking my video off, I'm not real sure. So anyway, I'll just keep keep rolling. Uh, one, one person did no, have a question just real quick. They asked if, um, um, if the slides would be available to people after. Sure, yeah, we can make them available for download okay. on, on your on your usual web, uh, webinar recording site. That's not a problem. Sure, Yeah. of we'll course. Do this and we'll send them out when we send the recording. Okay, great. Um, yeah, actually, there's I do have a question that, um, sure. you know, one thing is, uh, you know, a lot of people have been doing improvements and, and stuff for many years, making improvements. Can you, can you explain, you know, why, you know, why do we need the coaching in order to get improvement, especially when people have been kind of doing that for, for so long? Ah, yeah, I like the question. Recently, actually, I got a similar question, Jim. Somebody asked, um, can we do improvement without coaching? Is that even possible? And I said, sure, you can. I mean, uh, we maybe do it every day or some of us, you know, there's a cable on our, on our, on our desk kind of when we move the mouse, it's always in our way. So you move it out of the way, tape it down. Yeah, some improvement. Uh, it's eliminating waste, okay? Um, now, this type of improvement, although we might call it improvement, might not bring us closer to our targets, right? So it's kind of, you know, we want to be target oriented. That's where it kind of starts. Um, and if, if we pursue our targets, it's likely that sooner or later, after we've kind of reaped the low hanging fruits, we will enter the unknown zone. And this is actually where we start to need coaching. Uh, as long as we know, uh, we don't need, but it's a fine line. Uh, we often, we think we know when we already don't know. Um, and, and that is when uh, the help of a coach is so, so, so precious. Say, so, okay, I have a target and I don't know how to reach that yet. Uh, and then this coach can help me to proceed and explore uh, in a more scientific way. So basically uh, improvement, we don't wanna improve for improvement's sake. We wanna to improve towards challenges and targets and we wanna achieve uh, great things. And, and you know, we've, we see it over and over. People can outperform the expected through scientific thinking with a coach. This, this is just awesome. We've seen it over and over. But of course, as, as you asked, uh, that requires that we're moving, that we're pursuing a challenge and then that is super helpful. Okay, good. Is there, is there something special or unique about the co uh, Kata coaching approach 
compared to other other options? Yeah, so um, I want to be very careful here. So when we talk about coaching, I think we we should um, appreciate that coaching is a big is a big topic. Okay, and there's different types of coaching approaches. I sometimes say it's it's like a pie, and we're talking about one slice of it. Okay, um, now there is different kind of coaching approaches. Also, there's different kind of coaching settings. You know, like business coaching, career coaching. Uh, you could think sports coaching, you could think of different settings and there's different coaching models, approaches that can be used by the coach. Now, I think all these approaches have one thing in common and coaching kata is included in that. And that is that coaching aims at helping a person, an individual or a team to achieve a goal or solve a problem. Yeah, achieve a goal or solve a problem. Uh, so it could be, you know, career coaching, helping you to achieve something. Uh, could be, um, you know, e even even marriage counseling. Yeah, solve a problem. So there, there's, yeah, so coaching kind of does that too. We want to help an individual, a team to reach a challenging goal. Now, the difference I find with the coaching kind of model is that in addition to that, it has a second purpose. And that is while we coach and help to achieve some a specific goal, solve a specific problem, at the same time, we develop with the person a more scientific way of working and thinking, which will help them to achieve even bigger things in the future. And if you put that in an organization context, basically what it means is that working or, or coaching your team while working on the targets. So basically your daily management job, working on the towards the targets and developing people becomes one on the same thing. And, and I found that so because I was always struggling as a manager. So uh, work daily management and developing my team, daily management, developing my team. How do you, I don't have time for all this. So now with this, this becomes one and the same thing. So you, while your team works on the real challenges we have, you coach them, so they can achieve that and at the same time you develop their skills and increase creativity and adaptiveness. Okay, good. No, I think that's one thing and when you and I've talked before is certainly the coaching aspect and towards the objective. So ideally, we, we don't want to remove waste for the sake of removing waste. We really want to remove waste that, it, that is inhibiting us from reaching our objectives, business objectives, project objectives, um, whatever that might be. Try to have an alignment with... Uh, with the needs of the business. Um, ah, so with... uh, Jim, I just have, I have to chime in here. Sorry, Mark, Mark Hampton just wrote an awesome, you should all see oh. that in the chat, what he wrote. Okay. Uh, my experience is we leave out the coach. If we leave out the coaching, we often fail to solidify and share the learning that was taking place. The last question of the coaching had a, when can we go and see what we've learned? Awesome. Exactly. So in here's, um, Ah, I have to watch the time I get carried away here because this is so, so great, Mark. Um, so basically, in a world that is changing rapidly, speed of learning trumps knowledge, existing knowledge, okay? So the team that learns faster will win this. So basically, we're coaching. The, the, one of the main focus of the coach is increased speed of learning. And that is why it's not only the question, when can we go and see what we have learned? This is not, when can we go and see when you're done with your step? It's like, when can we get the first, when we poke reality, it pokes back. So we might, you know, after the first starting point of implementing our step, we will be already be learning. So we want to be quick there. And that's also why we ask, so what did you learn from taking your last step in, in phase two. And here's just a quick tip in your meetings. I'm sure many of you have meetings and you do minutes, right? And the minute is you, minutes you do is usually who does what until when. And you can use two questions to upgrade that. Uh, you don't need to change your minutes completely, but when you agree in the meeting on the next step, you could also ask, and what do we expect? And next time you meet, you do exactly what Mark said. You don't only ask, have you completed your step, which is the normal way of doing things. You also ask, and what did we learn? So you don't only ask, did it work? It worked or didn't? No, what did we learn? These are just two more columns on your minutes. Expectation and learning might do quite an upgrade. All right. Hey, uh, we're getting to the end, Jim, right? Yeah. Um, well, maybe more, we should uh, talk about Catacon or I don't know. Yeah, what, one more quick question. Hopefully you can answer pretty quickly because I think it's important. So if people are on here in particular listening or people live, listen to this afterwards, 
if they're if they haven't engaged in this yet, what would you recommend to be a good starting point for them to get engaged with with the, these practices and routines? Okay. So, well, we've been talking about coaching here. Now, of course, there is not the one and only way to get started. Okay. So when we started, when I started with my team at Festool very, very early, no books, part of the research Mike did, we experimented with the questions and we just started asking the questions. Okay. Now there's some danger there because um, if managers start asking questions, this has an impact on people. Uh, but still, I mean, um, start asking the questions. Um, now, you could find a peer you, you kind of trust and you have a relationship with and can say, hey, can we experiment with that? Now, a much better way, actually the best way to learn to become a coach is to have a coach first so that you can experience this kind of coaching in real life. And by the way, this is another really great thing I enjoy about the Kata community because over the past 12 years now, since Mike published the books, the global Kata community has grown and, and there's Kata schools, for example, in different countries. So maybe the best thing is to do kind of connect with somebody, find somebody in your region that is already practicing and a more experienced coach, find yourself that kind of coach and then get started. Um, of course, there's many of us that also work with teams and companies uh, where we can work, you know, where we can work with a bigger team, sure. But if you're asking as an individual, find a coach and network. And I mean, that's also why Catacon is super interesting um, to kind of network and get into the community there. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Well, then maybe maybe we'll wrap it up with one final question. Um, looking to Catacon 10 in April, what, yes. uh, what are you and Garrett going to share with us? at that oh yeah right so basically um today we talked about coaching skill and combining coaching skill in this cadence of coaching so um we not only have a few managers that are coaching and have good coaching skill but we're using this coaching skill to work on our really important targets the widely the wildly important targets that we've de de deployed yeah okay so it's like coaching for developing scientific thinking and reaching our targets or you could say combine or, or develop good coaching skill so we can reach challenging goals now in order to do that obviously we need good coaches and we kind of need to organize this process this cadence or this cascade on different on, on on all the levels how we're you know running this now how we're running the system i mean you can imagine uh, many companies have a shop floor management process right shop floor level one two three uh for for kind of solving the daily issues uh now imagine you had a second process happening with a freak daily frequency at a different time slot where we would work on our core strategic targets the improvement process this coaching cadence yeah so what we're going to do in the workshop is super unique this is going to be the first time in the us we're going to do this combination and we're going to talk about how can you develop great coaching skill in your organization and that is what we call the kind of coaching dojo so dojo is a training place um, you could think of it like a flight simulator for coaches I mean, it's pretty clear if you look to any coaching is a skill call it coaching is not knowledge that as a, so it doesn't develop through the ear, basically. Now, you could look, you can look into any realm where there's professional skill development and you will find that there is a place for practice. So, of course, athletes go to the training court um surgeons you don't start study heart surgery and then they just let you loose to do some surgery uh pilots okay you don't learn to fly a plane by reading a book uh, even if pilots have ten thousand hours of flight they go to the flight simulator so it seems like there's only one area i'll go black and white here and one area where we don't do this and this is management training we sent them to a course for two days i say okay now you're a coach <laughs> you can play the game Okay, uh, so basically we're talking about how can you create a safe space for coaches so they can practice. That's the dojo. And then we're going to talk about how can you create this cadence of coaching throughout all levels of your organization. We're going to bring this together. So create great coaching skill and then use it on all levels 
with high speed. And and basically, if if you, if you want to put it that way, um, um, Jim here, you could say we're bringing together the two books here. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the Orange Book, Cataculture, and Giving Wings to a Team. We're going to bring that together. Um, and it's I, I'm you can you can see I'm I'm kind of pumped, yeah, yeah, because we're going to do this. Uh, this is going to be very unique for the first time in the U.S. Uh, probably just once this year, uh, these two things, um, coaching cascade and developing coaching skills with the dojo. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Tilo. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank you everybody for joining us and we hope to see you at Katakon 10 and, uh, hope you will join in on Tilo and Gerd's, uh, workshop on April 11th. And yeah, like I said, you can find out more information by going to lean frontiers website and the Katakon 10, um website as well as well as with on in, in our at our website the workshop page if you're specifically interested in just the workshop so again with that thank you thank you very much everybody for joining us thank you tilo for sharing with us and as skylar said at the beginning in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours you'll get an email that will have a, a link to this and also um tilo if you send us slides we'll include those as well so again, thank you very much and thank you everybody and hopefully we'll see you here in a couple months.